Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a cute little North Pole sign. Now, I call it a North Pole sign, but that's only because I don't know what else to call it. Some of you may have seen these sort of things before. Um, you go to a certain area or a certain touristy area, and they have a pole. And that pole has arrows that point out in all different directions, and it says, you know, such and such a city. Chicago, let's say, 2,000 miles. Uh, such and such. 2,400 miles, that sort of thing. Well, we're going to make something like that, miniature size for a small little Christmas decoration, and it will be Christmas themed. So what else would I call it other than a North Pole sign? Guys, this is a great project to use up scrap, and that's what we're gonna start off with, a little bit of scrap wood. So I went into my scrap bin and found this scrap of walnut. It's 5 eighths of an inch thick, and it is, I don't know, five and a half, roughly five and a half square. Now, because I can, I took it inside and I laser engraved a snowflake on the one side. Now, if you don't have a laser engraver or anything like that, you could wood burn a snowflake in if you like the snowflake design. You could do whatever you please, or you can just leave the snowflake out of it. And what I'm going to do is in the center of this snowflake, I'm going to put a little punch mark there, just like that. And I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to set it just outside of the points of our snowflake. And I'm going to draw a circle around. Now that will be our base, essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut that circle out. Now for this I'm using a number 7 reverse tooth PGT blade and it should do a nice job giving us a nice clean edge all the way around. But it doesn't really matter because we're going to cut just slightly outside the circle and then sand up to the line over at the um, belt sander. And just to finish it off, we will give it a 1 8 inch round over on both the top and the bottom surfaces. And that is essentially the base for our sign. There is one more thing I want to do here with this, and that is right here in the middle, we're going to drill a 3 8 diameter stopped hole. So with this here being 5 8 of an inch thick, uh, I think I'm going to make that hole probably about a half an inch deep. So I'll get that drilled and then we can move on to the next step. Well, at this point, I want to make a template. Now you don't have to make a template, but it will save me from drawing this out 50 times. So I have a scrap of quarter inch hardboard here. I'm just going to place a line uh, about seven eighths of an inch from the edge. That measurement is really not crucial. It really uh, it depends on what you want here, and you'll understand a little more in just a minute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a couple of 45 degree lines here that meet up with our center line that we've drawn, just like that. And then somewhere down the line here, I'm not sure where, we're going to draw a cross piece, just like this, to make a triangle. And then I guess where I made the line at 7 eighths of an inch in, I have to think here, I want to go another half an inch out. So I'm going to draw a line at 3 eighths of an inch like that. And then another 3 eighths out from the 7 eighths. So that will be at a quarter. Like that, I got something buggered up there, I can tell you right now. Okay, let me try that again. So one, two, three, eights, there we go. There's the proper measurement, sorry. And you could tell what I'm making here. I'm making an arrow. So um, I want each arrow to be roughly, roughly six inches long. So we're just gonna place a mark there at about six inches. It's, it's not rocket science, guys. This is, uh, this is just a fun little project. And there we go. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this over to the scroll saw. 
I'm gonna use a number two reverse tooth blade and I'm gonna cut this arrow out in order to get a template. So I've gone over to my scrap bin and literally taken out a bunch of scrap. This is all offcuts and one eighth inch thick pieces from various model builds. Uh, we've got some maple, some walnut, some cherry, some pine, some poplar. And what we need to do is using our template that we just made, I want to draw out eight of these arrows, preferably two in each species, but I've only got a little bit of the scrap one eighth uh, maple. So I'll do one poplar, one maple, uh, two walnut, two cherry, and two pine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trace them out using our template. And then again, we'll cut them at the scroll saw because these don't have to be perfect. Well, with one eighth inch thick material, it really doesn't take long to cut these. Um, they're extremely fast to cut and I've given them all the good sanding. The best part about this, guys, is that if you're not that good with a scroll saw, you, these don't have to be perfect. None of these are perfect and I don't care about that because if they were on an actual sign, they wouldn't be perfect either. So I kind of like the way that they're you know, they've got their little imperfections. They still look good, but I know they're not perfect and that's what I like about it. So now comes the fun part, guys, and that is placing some designs on these arrows. So you need to come up with some sayings here as to what you want. Maybe Santa's workshop or uh, Mrs. Claus's kitchen, maybe the elf village or I don't know, reindeer stables or something like that. And you need to put the lettering on your arrows. So two of them will have, let's, let's just say Santa's workshop. So two of them will have Santa's workshop on it, on this side and on this side. Just make sure that you're putting it on the right side so that the arrows aren't opposite. You'll understand after, I'll show you what I mean. But you can wood burn these on. If you have a Cricut cutter, you can use those, uh, use the Cricut cutter to put it on. You can use magic marker. You can paint them on. You can stencil them on. You can do whatever you like to get your letters on there. For me, you guys know I have a new toy. I have the new laser engraver. So I will be laser engraving the words onto these. Um, I don't think we need a video of it. This is not about laser engraving. It's about making this little fun decoration. So I'm gonna get these uh, laser engraved and I'll show you what I want to do with them after that. Now, regardless of how you do your letters, whether it's wood burn, paint, whatever, you need to make sure that your letters are on your arrows so that your arrows point in opposite directions. That way, when you have them on both sides, your arrow is pointing the right way and your letters are the right way up. If you do them both the same way, then your letters will end up being upside down on one of them. So just make sure that your arrows are facing opposite directions. So what we're going to do now is for each one of our sets here, we're going to put them together carefully and we are gonna mark a square line somewhere here on our on our arrow. It doesn't matter where, just a light line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to the drill press. I'm gonna tape these together so that they don't move. And I'm just going to close to the edge on that line, I'm going to drill a 3 32nd diameter hole. Okay, just like that. And now we can erase that line and we will do this for each one of our sets of arrows. Well, the next piece that we're going to need is a 13 inch long piece of 3 8 inch dowel. And what I've got is I've laid out my signs the way that I want them. We're going to take one of these top signs here, the Claus's or Mrs. Claus's kitchen. We're going to line it up here on our dowel and we're just going to mark where those holes are, just like that. Now, we're gonna take it over and drill them, but we've made a little bit of a jig, and the jig couldn't be simpler. I've just taken a scrap piece of half inch ply um, and cut a little bit of a dado in it, and that dado holds our dowel. 
Now, let me take it over to the drill press here and I'll show you how we're gonna work this. I have set the fence on my drill press so that the center of this dado lines up with the center of our drill bit here. And we've marked our holes. So all we're going to do is place our uh, dowel in our little jig, in that groove, in that dado, and we're going to drill our first hole. Then we're gonna slide our entire jig, I guess we'll call it, over to line up with the next hole. You want to be careful while you're drilling these first two holes that you don't accidentally spin or rotate your, um, your dowel. As long as you get the distance between them right, it doesn't matter, you know, if it's exactly on those marks or not. As long as they are centered on the jig here and they're properly spaced. So let me just drill these two and uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do with this. <laughs> All right, so let's head over to the bench. Now, eventually, the way that these signs are going to mount is we are going to glue in a one inch length of 332nd diameter dowel, just like that, centered in our 3 8 dowel with those two holes that we just drilled. And then once they're dry, our sign will just sit here, just like this, on our dowels. Now it's a little difficult here at the moment because of course my dowels aren't glued in, but it'll sit just like that. Now, what we're gonna do at this point now is we're gonna remove this. I was just giving you an idea of how they mount. Now we know where those two are. We're gonna take our next one, but we're gonna rotate. We're gonna rotate our dowel about 90 degrees, just roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna come down maybe about an inch from the other sign, roughly. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna hold that in place. We're gonna mark our two holes on our dowel, just like this. And we're gonna do the exact same thing now. We're gonna take it over to our jig and we're gonna drill another two 332nd diameter holes. Then we're gonna take our next group of signs, we're gonna rotate it again, roughly 90 degrees. You get the idea, drill two more holes until we get all eight holes drilled for our arrow signs. Well, I've given our dowel a sanding and I've sanded off any rough edges on our one inch lengths of 332nd dowels. And we're just going to put a little dab of glue on each one of these little dowels here and we will glue them centered into our 3 8 dowel. And we'll clean up the squeeze out and we will get all of our other seven dowels glued in place. So now just to finish off our sign pole, nothing fancy here, guys. Uh, I'm just going to use, believe it or not, a pre-made wooden craft bead. And I've just installed a little piece of dowel in it and we're just gonna glue it in place, just like this. And there we go. And that will finish off the top of our pole. So let's put this thing together. So now how do we do it? Let me just show you how simple this is. Well, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take your pole and place it into your base, just like that. And then from there, your signs will just hang and sit on these 332nd diameter dowels. And you can arrange them however you want um, you know, pointing whichever way you wish. Because it doesn't matter because the signs are double-sided. You'll be able to read them no matter what side they are on. And I think the elf village went next. Just like that. And last will be our reindeer stables.
and that's it. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? Just a cute little Christmas decoration, and I mean so simple, so simple. Well, there you go, guys. A North Pole sign. And there you have it. A North Pole sign, or whatever you want to call it. Again, I called it that because I don't know what else to call it. Guys, this is a fun project. This thing opens up to all kinds of modifications. You want to paint it and make it colorful? Paint it. You want to do it in different species of wood like what I've done here? Then do it. For me, I'm going to add a coat of uh, satin varnish to all of this to really seal it in and make everything stand out. That'll really make those, uh, those laser engravings stand out as well. But if you don't have the laser engraver, you could wood burn it. You could wood burn pictures on it. You could paint it, paint your letters, stencil them on. You could cut stencils with your scroll saw and use a spray, can, a, a spray paint and just blast it on as a stencil as if it was done kind of like the old crate style. Guys, whatever you want to do with this, this is really open to modification. You don't even have to put Santa's workshop and all this other stuff. Change it up for different holidays. How about for Halloween? Pumpkin patch this way, uh, graveyard, you know, whatever. Change it up and make it your own because that's what this show is about. Taking an, taking an idea like this, making it your own and making your own project. Either way, guys, this one's a load of fun, and I hope you're going to give it a try. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's content. Now, I know that there are going to be some of you out there that say, oh, I don't have this laser engraver. Who cares? Choose a different method to put the letters on there. And I'm sure that some of you out there are wondering why I chose the method I did to mount the signs. Guys, it's all about storage in this case. And if those signs are all glued onto that um, pole in all different ways, uh, for starters, it makes it fragile during storage and very easy to get broken. And it takes up so much room, at least with those dowels there that the signs just sit on there. You can pull it apart very easily, very quickly, and store it in very little space. So if your space is at a premium, this is a perfect cute little decoration to put on your table at Christmas time. It doesn't take up much room, and when you put it away, it also doesn't take up much room. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell, and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.